Coming up next on Columbus Connection, attention all property owners. We have some information for you regarding assessment notices. Yes, they are out. I want you to know everything about them. Stay tuned. Welcome to Columbus Connections. I am your host, David Britt. Now, this show is for all property owners. By the time you see this, you may have received a notice in the mail from the tax assessors giving you your official tax matter, your notice of assessment for your property. You may have some questions about it, and we have just the person to answer those questions you may have. The tax assessor for Muskogee County, Miss Suzanne Whitenhouse, is here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you, David. Glad to be here. Awesome, I'm glad to have you now. Of course, many of you already know, and when I'm not moonlighting as a show host, my day job is in the tax commissioner's office, which they, we, they sometimes confuse us. They the tax do. assessor's <laughs> office assesses the value of property, and the tax commissioner's office collects based on that value. But this is about your assessment notice, the official tax matter. The official tax notice that, that we send out every year as required uh, by the statute. Uh, Department of Revenue says we will and we do send these notices out to all taxable property owners. So whether it's real property, mm -hmm. personal property, you, um, if it's taxable, you will receive a notice of assessment. And those are hitting mailboxes now. Right. And real property, that's whether you own a, a home, own a business. A boat, uh, an airplane. Right. Even if you're renting a personal property, if you're renting a, 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 a space in the office, mm -hmm. you're going to receive, you may receive something on that. Absolutely. On that space you rent. And if you're, even if you're leasing equipment, you may receive mm -hmm. that notice right. because you need to report that you've been, you know, leasing that equipment. So you would, you potentially get a, a notice on that. Um, if you didn't let us know that mm -hmm. somebody else actually owns it, but right. it's in your office. So it's, right. in, it's important to, uh, to respond to those notices and to take a look closely at the notice when you receive it. Gotcha. So let's talk about the notice and what does it say. What is the official tax matter, the official tax notice? So what that is, is that is a notice that states what your property's fair market value is. Uh, so if it's, as an example, a home, it's your fair market value. It also indicates whether you have any kind of an exemption on the property. Say you have a homestead. Um, maybe you're a disabled vet and you have a disabled veterans homestead exemption. Those will be indicated on that notice of assessment. The other thing that is on that notice is um, an estimate of taxes. And it's important to understand what that estimate is indicating. That's your fair market value that we've placed on your property for this year. But the millage rate that's on there is mm -hmm. actually last year's rate. Right. Um, it's not this year's rate. Uh, this year's rate is set by uh, council, and um, it, it's based off of, uh, they look at how much growth there has been in the county to determine if there's a rollback rate mm -hmm. or not. So the taxes that are indicated in that estimate box may not be right on the money right? Um, because that is based off of last year's. Right, and it's an estimate and it is not your tax bill. So yes, when you please get the do tax not minute, send payment. <laughs> right, do not send payment. And again, it's, 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 an infra it's, for, it's for the citizen to know where mm -hmm. they stand, to know if you apply for homestead, to verify that, that homestead is on there, to know what you can expect your bill to be and to get an understanding of what your value is. Correct. The other thing that's very important on that notice is your appeal rights. Right. Um, that notice uh, has a date at the top of it uh, that indicates uh, the date of the notice and, your, and a 45-day appeal period. So from the date of our notices, our notices this year are dated May 31st, and that gives you 45 days um, in which to study that notice, look at that notice, um, you know, maybe do some research if, if you don't feel that, that value is indicative or correct. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can file an appeal with us as long as you file that appeal by the 15th of July. That will be the end of the 45 day period, will be July 15th. Got you, so if, and again, that notice, that may not be your actual upcoming taxes, but 
based on that value, if you disagree with that value, whether you feel it should be higher or lower, mm -hmm. that's you, correct. You have 45 days to appeal that value. Right. You can't appeal taxes. Right. But you can appeal your valuation, or if you applied for a homestead and maybe didn't receive it. Um, if there was a, a reason that your homestead application may have been denied, you have the right to appeal those things. Um, you can apply if you applied for a conservation use covenant, as an example, and that was denied. You have the right to appeal those. Mm -hmm. um, so you can appeal based on value. You can appeal taxability. If you, uh, if you believe you're a tax-exempt organization and you've received a bill, uh, not a bill, excuse me, misspeak there, uh, a notice of assessment, and you don't believe that you're taxable, um, you can appeal based on taxability, uh, denial of homestead, denial of covenant. So those rights are spelled out in that notice. Uh, it's important to understand that appeals must be filed either in person or via the mail. We do not accept email appeals and we do not accept faxed appeals. And so. Let's talk more about that appeal process. Sometimes there's a perception that people are I have to fight against the government. But again, this is for the citizens and this information. And those appeals do get reviewed by an independent board and they do really, you have the right to appeal. Yes. So let's talk about how that works and what people need to do to appeal their value. Well, people need to understand that our appraisal process, we, it's similar to, to what you go through when you buy a house, mm -hmm. um, but we do it on a much larger scale. Um, when you hire an appraiser, when you buy a house, they're going to go into the house, they're going to look at everything, they're going to find a few comps and compare it to, in order to determine a value. Well, we do what's called mass appraisal. So we value property on a mass scale and we do it from the exterior. So maybe you have something on the interior of your home that would affect its value mm. that we can't see from the outside. So the appeal process is your opportunity to let us know. And so what happens, you file an appeal, um, you can come down to our office, we have staff on hand ready to assist you with the, with the paperwork. You have to indicate what you believe the value of the property to be and we encourage you if you have any issues with your property that, that we may not know about, please let us know. Uh, part of that process of the appeal is we will send an appraiser out there to your property to re-review that property in case we've missed something, mm -hmm. have data incorrect in, in our system, in our records. Um, so we want to make sure that, that we have accurate information. That's the only way we can get you an accurate value. And mm -hmm. so that's one thing that we, that we do ask. Once the appraiser takes a look at the property, we review the valuation, we review what, uh, what the pra appraiser noticed while he was at your property. Um, we then will either make changes or if we feel that our records were correct, we'll still mm -hmm. send a you know, notification on mm -hmm. the result of that. Um, if we've made a change, you'll receive another notice that opens another 30-day appeal window for you to either agree, um, in which case you don't have to do anything, or disagree, um, in which case that um, you would need to continue that appeal and it would go on to the Board of Equalization, which is an independent board named by the grand jury. Mm -hmm. um, they are not affiliated with our office. They right. are all uh, property owners and, uh, and citizens of Muskogee County um, that would uh, listen to your appeal and make a determination whether, uh, whether our value was correct or, or whether you had presented sufficient evidence to adjust that value. Right, mm -hmm. and that's the process. It sounds, it sounds like a lot, but it is it's very, very It steps. is not, it it's is not. not as adversarial as people are yes, afraid it to yes. be. My staff is ready, willing, and able to assist you. We want everybody's value to be correct. We want people to feel like they have a voice. Right. And we are listening, and we will listen if you've got concerns about your property and about that valuation. We are more than happy to listen and to consider those issues that you have with that property. Right. Um, property values um, are, are a part of life, and uh, unfortunately with that goes the taxation, and right. that, that is also a part of life. <laughs> you get the yep. collection side yep. of the yep. house. <laughs> yeah. And like we mentioned earlier, even if on your notice your value is higher, that does not necessarily mean that your taxes are going to increase. No, it does not. Um, we have frozen homestead here in Muskogee County. We're mm -hmm. very fortunate. If your home is already homesteaded, 
as long as you have not made any additions to the property um, in the last year, that taxable value, that fair market value that's actually subject to taxation, um, that is that is not uh, that does not change with the frozen homestead. It remains it remains what it is, um, and so the only the only way your tax is adjusted at that point is based on that millage rate. Right. So that frozen homestead's a, a saving grace, but that's also not the only thing that would prevent higher taxes mm -hmm. just because your value goes up. We have what's called the rollback. Right. Um, and what the and the way that's calculated is they look at last year's values, they look at this year's values. We determine how much of that is the result of inflation mm -hmm. or how much is the result of real growth, new construction, additions, right. things like that. And that inflation amount is taken into consideration and it can cause a rollback in the millage rate. So the millage rate could be considered to not increase and actually be lower mm -hmm. than, uh, than it was last year. Right. Um, and that's all due to that to that rollback rate. So you value may be valued more. Your property may have a higher value on it, but that doesn't necessarily translate to a higher tax. Awesome. All right. So in summary, the tax notices, by the time you see this, they have hit the streets. Uh, and yes. this is the notice saying what your property, real, personal, um, what other, who else gets, who else gets notices? So business owners, mm -hmm. boat owners, aircraft owners, um, any business that owns real property and uh, any homeowner that, uh, of course, that owns the property that, that they reside in. Right. Um, so that's basically all real property. Um, now, if you're tax exempt, uh, we don't send them to, to mm -hmm. tax exempt organizations. And if you have personal property that's less than $7,500, that's not subject to taxation. Um, so we don't, we don't send them to, to business owners that have less than that in, in the way of property. Yeah. If you're a property owner and you don't receive a notice and you're uncertain about whether you will, most people will know, but if you're uncertain or you don't receive your notice, what should you do? Contact my office. Um, that, that's the, the, first, the first thing is, is if you do not receive your notice and you feel you should have, uh, please contact my office. If you are a new homeowner who has just acquired the property, please contact my office. Mm. If you are a former owner of the property, say you sold your property at the end of last year and you receive a notice, um, you don't have to do anything with that notice. Uh, it would be nice if you would let us know that right. you're no longer the owner, but, um, but we sometimes they, we send them to both old and mm -hmm. new owners yeah. um, so that we, we capture that. Um, depending on when that property was acquired, there may have been a little bit of overlap there. So we'll try and send it to both owners. Right, and the key dates is that the, the notice is dated for May 31st. May 31st. So if you would like to appeal, that appeal, that appeal deadline is July 15th. July 15th, it has to be in physically delivered to our office by 5 p.m. on July 15th or postmarked by the post office. Um, by the 15th of July. And um, please note that we don't accept a counter stamp, um, which is one right. of the, the metered, we don't, yes, it's the metered mail yes. stamps, we don't accept those. It must, must be, be counter stamped possible. by the post office. Gotcha. Um, so if you're a business that uses metered mail, make sure you take that into the post office and have them place that counter stamp on it. Um, because if that counter stamp is not on there, we will not consider it to have been uh, timely filed. Awesome. Is there any other information we need to share? So we're located on the second floor of the City Services Center. Uh, tax commissioners on the down, on the first floor. You need to come upstairs to see us. Um, so come on up to our office. We're there from 8 until 5, uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, it's the second floor of the, of the uh, City Services Center at uh, 30. What's 31 our address? 3111 11 Citizens, Citizens Way. Way. <laughs> yeah. And what's the phone number if they need to contact? We are at 706-653-4398 uh, awesome. is, is the phone number. And we can also, if you have questions that you would like to email in, um, you can email those to ccgboa at columbusga.org. Awesome. Well, thank you for all of your hard work and the hard work that your team does. I know city employees and staff doesn't always get the thanks that they deserve, but you guys really work hard. You guys are always helping with us, and we really appreciate what you all do. Well, thank you so much for having us, and uh, please, if you have any questions, give my office a call. We're, we're, we're there ready to help. 
they're ready to help. And thanks for watching Columbus Connections.